guys, welcome back to the George's channel and today we're going to be looking at four of the Canon RF macro lenses, going through the details and hopefully helping you choose which macro lens will be best for your style of photography. Macro photography is a fascinating and rewarding genre of photography that can be used by portrait photographers, product photographers, or even street photographers. When shooting on a wider aperture like the lenses we'll be looking at today, one of the things to look at is the depth of field and how shallow you can make that. Many photographers will look for a lens with a lower f-stop in order to capture those blurry, creamy backgrounds. So whether you're a hobbyist or a professional photographer looking to take your macro photos to the next level, we're going to have a look at everything you need to know today and help you make a decision. First up, we'll be looking at Canon's RF 100mm f2.8 macro lens. Let's dive into a few more of the specs of this lens and check out just why it's so popular. The lens has a more advanced optical design configuration, all of which work together to minimize optical aberrations. The lens also features a super spectra coating that helps to reduce ghosting and flare and a nine blade circular aperture. The thing that really sets this lens apart, however, is its exceptional macro capabilities with a 1.4 times magnification ratio and 0.26 meter focusing distance. This high magnification ratio is particularly useful in capturing the intricate details of small subjects with incredible clarity. When looking at image stabilization and autofocus, this lens provides you with up to five stops of shape correction and uses a dual nano USM system that provides fast and precise autofocus performance, even in low light situations. The lens also has a focus limiter switch that allows you to limit the focus range to either a specified range or the entire range. This can help you speed up autofocus performance and reduce hunting that you might experience in challenging conditions. The 100 millimeter lens also has full-time manual focus override for precision and control. And now let's jump into the build and design of this lens. The 100mm is weather sealed, featuring a customizable control ring that can be assigned to various functions such as aperture control or ISO adjustment. This lens is perfect for capturing those extreme close-ups and tiny details on pictures of animals, small objects and insects. In general, to create a shallower depth of field, photographers will opt for a wider aperture focus on subjects relatively close to the lens and opt for a longer focal length. When we look at this in terms of depth of field, we're getting that extremely long focal length of 100 millimeters combined with a pretty wide f2.8 stop aperture. Together, these features will help to create a very shallow depth of field in your shots, compressing the distance between the background and the subject and creating beautiful, creamy bokeh. Next up, we're going to be having a look at the 85mm macro lens and comparing it to the one we just checked out. Let's look into the specs. This 85mm lens features a 12 element optical design that includes one UD element and one PMO element. We're going to briefly touch on the bokeh and low light capabilities of this lens, both of which can be attributed to the lens's maximum aperture of f2 in conjunction with its nine blade circular aperture. With a minimum focusing distance of just 0.3 five meters and a maximum magnification of 0.5, macro enthusiasts will also greatly appreciate the lens's ability to capture stunning close-up shots. Equipped with a five-stop optical image stabilizer to compensate for camera shape, the 85mm macro also makes handheld shooting that much easier. Now, let's take a look at the lens's autofocus capabilities. The 85mm lens features a dual nano USM autofocus system consisting of two separate focus motors, which work together to provide smooth, accurate, and silent autofocus. When looking at the build, it has a compact, lightweight design and it's weather sealed to protect against dust and moisture. The lens measures at just 7.8 centimeters in length, coming in at just 500 grams and featuring the customizable control ring just like the 100 millimeter had. Thank you. 
Moving in a slightly different direction from what we've been looking at, we now have the Canon 24mm f1.8 lens. Here we see a minimum focusing distance of just 0.13 meters, making it the closest focusing distance we've got out of all of the four lenses today. It also has the lowest aperture, similar to the 35 we'll be looking at later, of f1.8. When we're looking at this in the context of macro, what we're gonna see with this lens is that you're able to get so much closer to your subject while still retaining a good amount of the environment your subject is in. It also features the same super spectra coating that minimizes ghosting and flare. It's excellent in reducing distortion and has up to five stops of built-in image stabilization alongside a seven blade circular aperture. To keep it short, this is a lens that's going to give you sharp images, great colors, and the flexibility that the 24 millimeter focal length offers. Weighing just 225 grams and measuring at 7.8 centimeters in length, the 24 millimeter is both dust and moisture resistant and like all of Canon's lenses, you can expect a sturdy build here. It also features the same customizable control ring we've seen in the other lenses and is compatible with Canon's full frame and mirrorless cameras and with mount adapters on other builds. The Canon RF 35mm lens is an all-rounder. It's great for street photography, portrait, product, macro, you name it, this has been used for it. And it's pretty easy to see why this is becoming so popular in the RF lineup and among macro photographers in general. With a maximum magnification of 0.5 times and a minimum focusing distance of 0.17 meters, this lens is going to get you up close and personal with the subject you're shooting, capturing great details, textures and giving you those creamy smooth backgrounds. Let's have a deep dive into a few more of the features that this lens offers. The 35mm lens won't look too different from the 24mm in terms of specs with a maximum magnification of 0.5 times. Its longer focal length however means you're able to create slightly shallower depths of field especially when close up with your subject. The 35mm again features an optical configuration that will reduce distortion and it again features features that same super spectra coating as well as a nine blade circular aperture giving you a slightly better quality bokeh. The 35 millimeter lens features built-in image stabilization with standard mode for general shooting and panning mode for tracking subjects. Again we've got up to five stops of IS and an STM autofocus system again making it a super appealing option for videographers. Not too different from the 24 millimeter lens this is compact lightweight and weighs only 305 grams, making it again a really good option for travel photographers or versatility in a single small lens. Now that we've tested out each of these macro lenses, had a look at some of their features and seen exactly what they're capable of, it's easy to see why so many people gravitate towards these lenses. The macro capabilities that these lenses have built in are transferable to other macro lenses that you're going to look at. So everything you've learned today is super important for picking a macro lens, whether that's one from the Canon RF lineup or one that's better suited to your build. When looking at the depth of field of each of these lenses, that's definitely going to be one of the main comparison points that shooters are looking at when picking which lens is best for them. I noticed that personally, as someone who shoots a lot of portrait and street photography and likes a longer focal length, I found the 85 millimeter the best suited for me. I liked how you could get those super blurry backgrounds while still having a bit wider of an angle than that 100 millimeter to get some more of the context into the photo along with the subject. For someone who is doing mainly macro photography, the 100 millimeter is going to be your choice. It is the priciest and the most high end of the four, but if you're someone who likes shooting close up nature photos from insects to tiny objects, this is what's going to get you the shallowest depth of field. If you're someone who shoots photo and video, someone who's more into travel photography, or even someone who just prefers to pack a little bit lighter and have more options 
comes with the sort of shots they're going to be taking. These two lenses with their shorter focal length are probably going to be best for you. They're also great for someone who wants to get super, super physically close to their subject as they have the shortest focusing distances. And they're also going to be great for showing a lot more of that environment your subject is in, as well as the crisp details of the subject itself. The 24 and 35mm lenses are your go-to lenses for versatile, lifestyle, travel or any kind of shooting where you're not wanting to lug around one of these two bigger lenses. And the 35 and 24 for more versatile shooters who shoot in a range of environments and prefer packing light and having a few more options when it comes to those low light capabilities. Overall, each of these lenses is going to give you beautiful results when it comes to macro photography. And if you're looking at picking up any of these four, you won't be disappointed. If the features of these four lenses appeal to you, there are plenty of macro lenses out there that fit those features and will be perfect for suiting your macro needs. Thank you guys so much for watching this today and make sure to like and subscribe to George's for more videos and reviews just like this one.